If you have an overly controlling person in your life, this could be the perfect keyboard to give them because they won't be able to find their control key in the normal place. The board does have a control key, it's just up here where caps lock usually is. Hey, this keyboard isn't gonna solve the issue, but at least it'll throw them off for a little bit. Jokes aside, this is actually a really nice keyboard and it's a big improvement in ergonomics over more traditional keyboard layouts. It uses a layout called Happy Hacker or HHKB, which is apparently inspired by several historical keyboard layouts. And that was surprising to me because most aspects of the layout seem far superior to a normal keyboard layout, except one very big one, which I'll get to in a minute. The adjustments it makes seem pretty minor on the surface, but they may actually be really impactful for a lot of people. There are of course some other modern keyboard layouts that deviate even further from traditional layouts, but those can carry a much steeper learning curve that might not be palatable for most people. Full disclosure, I did not buy this board with my own money. It was very kindly sent to me by Keychron for review. And as always, that doesn't mean I'm required to say anything and I'll never give anything other than my honest opinion. Okay, let's walk through this happy hacker layout that the Q60 Max uses. First, as we mentioned already, the control key is moved up to replace the caps lock key. To me, the caps lock key is pretty useless and I suspect that's the case for most people. Please let me know in the comments if you're someone that actually uses a caps lock key. I'd love to get your perspective. So instead of having to reach way down with your pinky to hold the control key, it's just a small horizontal move with your pinky. To me, there's not much of a trade-off there unless you actually use Use the caps lock key, this is just objectively better. All this said, it is worth noting that you technically don't necessarily need to get a board like this to make this optimization. You can actually do it in software. For example, in Mac OS, there's a place in settings where you can simply swap out caps lock for another key like control or escape. Of course, the downside of that approach is that the configuration is specific to the computer instead of the keyboard itself. And that might be a drawback or an advantage depending on your setup. And then instead of having the back tick and tilde key right above tab, you have the escape key. So basically now it's close enough to the home row to potentially press without moving your entire left hand off the home row. I personally use the escape key way too much to have it as far away as it is on traditional boards. And then on the right side of the board, you have another common sense optimization. Instead of having the backspace key being two rows above the home row, it's down where the backslash key normally is, one row above the home row. I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who uses the backslash more often than the backspace key. So this change makes a ton of sense. Wait a second. It's actually not a backspace key, it's a delete key. What? Yeah, the key that most keyboards relegate to way over here. Now, my griping here doesn't really have any bearing on whether you should actually buy this board because you can just fix the problem by changing the layout. So this isn't really a serious issue. I just thought it was a really interesting choice. You could even argue that this wasn't actually Keychron's choice. They're just following the official happy hacker layout to a T. Anyway, the delete key does not delete the character you most recently typed which 99.9% .9 of the time, at least for me, is actually what you wanna do. It deletes the character immediately to the right of the cursor. I tried to search for an explanation for this and I wasn't able to discover much around the utility of having a delete key instead of backspace. I still feel like I might be missing something here. To be fair, the backspace key isn't completely missing from the default layout. You just need to hold down this function key while pressing delete and you get backspace. I guess that makes it slightly better, but not really. <laughs> Okay, that's the delete key. If you needed inspiration to learn how to use VIA to customize the layout, there you go, that's your inspiration. Anyway, then where the backspace key would normally be two rows above the home row, you have the backslash and backtick keys. When all is said and done, I guess the only key that sort of gets a downgrade is the backslash key. But how often do you really use a backslash key? I guess if you're on Windows and you're typing Windows file paths a lot or something, you might not like this placement. Other than that and the bizarre relegation of the backspace key to the delete key, the layout is pretty nice. Now let's talk about the way the board sounds and feels. The Q60 Max offers three switch options, one of which is linear and two of which are tactile. The switches are Gateron, but apparently they are exclusive to Keychron. They're factory lubed, which seems to be all the rage these days. I have personally never hand lubed my switches and I have no intention of ever doing so. It seems pretty awful. I chose banana switches, which according to this table are similar to panda switches. I can only assume they're referring to Holy Pandas and their various imitators. I've never actually tried Holy Pandas, but these switches feel amazing. I usually consider myself a pretty dedicated fan of linear switches, but these banana switches may have made me a believer in, you know, that tactile life. Incredibly smooth with a small tactile bump at the top of the key press. Look, I'm a huge fan of next-gen columnar split keyboards, but in terms of the sound and feel, specifically of the key presses, I think this is the best of all the boards I've tried. I just realized that if you put these switches in a split keyboard, it would be a banana split keyboard. Can you tell I'm a dad? The build quality of this thing, as you'd expect from a Keychron product, is rock solid. 
The case is solid aluminum, and apparently there are more layers of foam in this thing than I ever thought was possible to fit in a keyboard. Ways to connect the board to your devices, you can of course wire it directly with a USB-C cable. If you wanna connect it wirelessly, you can use Bluetooth, or you can use a 2.4 gigahertz connection if you're willing to plug this dongle directly into the machine that you're gonna use it with. The 2.4 gigahertz connection should get you lower latency than a Bluetooth connection, so if you're a gamer, that's going to be your ticket probably. The board does use QMK firmware, so you can completely customize your layout in any way you'd like. I don't usually like to make blanket statements like this because everyone has a different workflow, but I'm pretty confident every single person is going to want to change the delete key to a backspace key. Anyway, with QMK, you can use something called VIA to change the layout in real time without having to reflash the board. VIA does have a desktop application, but they have a web interface, so you don't actually have to install anything. You literally just assign keys in your browser and the changes take effect immediately on your board. So yeah, the first thing we're gonna do is change that delete key to be a backspace key. There we go, much better. But you can do other stuff too, like replacing the H key with the escape key, you know, if you wanted to. So that is the Q60 Max. Overall, a really fantastic board. If I wasn't such a big fan of split boards, I could easily see myself using this as my daily driver. I have been gaming a little bit lately and I've been using the Q60 Max for my gaming and it's been really nice for that. Aside from the whole delete key thing, it's hard to argue that any of the happy hacker layout improvements are a bad idea. To me, they just seem objectively better than traditional keyboards, and I don't fully understand why you'd actively choose to use a traditional board instead of something like this. Of course, there is a small learning curve, but it seems like you'd get some pretty outsized value out of that small investment. If you are interested in keyboards, I have a few other videos you're gonna wanna check out. There's one on the Digma Defy, which is a great board, and then one on the Mo Ergo Glove 80, which at the time I'm making this video is my daily driver, and another on my keyboard and layout journey in general. And I guess we'll put that in front of my face. Yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Ooh. That's a very nice.